Hi there, and welcome back to An Understanding Medications. Since we're going to begin our discussions on medications that work on cellular receptors in this chapter, it's really important that we have a good, clear picture of what cellular receptors are and also have a general idea of the four different types of cellular receptors. So those are going to be the aims of this lesson. Human cells are made of a phospholipid bilayer. The uh, phospholipid bilayer is constantly moving a little bit, and that bilayer is held together by various attractant and repelling properties of the molecules. So there's uh, van der Waals forces, which will allow the uh, lipid soluble tails to attract each other and then there's hydrogen bonding that's going to allow the heads to be attracted to each other. On the surface of the phospholipid bilayer there's different proteins and these proteins include structural proteins, there's enzymes that speed up reactions, there's channels and transport carrier molecules, and there's also cellular receptors. And most of our cellular receptors, uh, three of the four different types of cellular receptors, are on the cell surface. They're transmembrane proteins. In other words, what they do is they span all the whole distance of the phospholipid bilayer from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. And being a receptor, it's going to receive something. So what is it going to receive? The thing that the cellular receptors receive is called the uh, receptor's ligand, or sometimes called ligand. This is a representation of the insulin receptor. The insulin receptor is an enzyme-linked receptor, and it's located on the outer surface of certain cells. This type of receptor is not on all cells in the body, but rather just the cells that need that receptor. When the receptor is bound by its ligand, the natural substance for which the receptor was made, in this case insulin, that results in a change in the shape of the protein. It results in a conformational change and that ultimately results in a cascade of events within the cell. So it's ultimately responsible for messaging the cell or a protein associated with the receptor to do something. In this case, it signals an increase in the amount of glucose transport carrier molecules being placed on the surface of the cell. So you can see how the pancreas has used insulin as the message for the muscle cells to react in a given way. And the G-protein-linked receptor acts in a similar way where the binding of the natural ligand results in a cellular response. The ligand-gated ion channel is a bit different. It's a receptor that undergoes that conformational change after the binding of the natural ligand, but that change just opens up a channel for positively or negatively charged particles to go through the cell surface. And finally, there's the intracellular receptors. The ligands for those have to be lipid soluble in order to get through the phospholipid bilayer. And when those ligands bind to their receptor, the entire receptor ligand complex goes into the nucleus of the cell, binds to the DNA, and simply put, those ligands are going to affect the production of proteins that the cell makes. In summary of this lesson, cellular receptors are proteins that are on the surface of the cell, or they're also inside the cell. Intracellular receptors are possible as well. And those proteins, as they're bound by the natural ligand, they're going to result, they're going to undergo a conformational change, 
in the protein, a change in the structure of the protein, and that's going to result in a cascade of events inside the cell. And therefore, the ligand and the cellular receptors are our way of communicating between one cell and another cell. And we'll find out how our medications use those receptors because most of our medications use cellular receptors for their therapeutic actions. We've just taken a look at the major types of cellular receptors, and we've noted that most of our medications bind to one of those receptors to perform their therapeutic actions. Recall that cellular receptors are the cell's way of receiving communications from other cells or other parts of the body. When the receptor is bound by the natural ligand, or a drug that mimics the natural ligand, that is the signal for the cell to do something. For instance, the binding of the insulin receptor on muscle cells increases the number of GLUT4 transport carrier proteins on the cell surface. So our cells can regulate the number of proteins that are embedded in the cell surface. And just like that increase in number of transport carrier proteins, the cell has the ability to increase or decrease the number of the cell receptors on the cell surface. So think about that. The cell has the ability to increase or decrease the number of cellular receptors. So we can actually alter the number of messages that go into the cell, can't we? Let's take an example. We have natural opioids in the body that decrease the transmission of pain. Our medications called the opioids bind to those same receptors and they also decrease the transmission of pain. But when a person takes pharmacological doses of opioids for about three weeks or more, the cells themselves decide that there's too many receptors on the cell surface. So right now, hypothesize what will happen to the perception of pain when the cells themselves decrease the number of opioid pain-relieving receptors. A, the perception of pain will stay the same. B, the perception of pain will increase. C, the perception of pain will decrease. And you were correct if you said B, the perception of pain will increase. One of the biggest problems with using pharmacological doses of opioids is the fact that the cells themselves recognize that there is an abundance of opioids in the system and they respond by taking some of the receptors, the opioid receptors, off the cell surface. They pull those receptors off the cell surface, they degrade them, and use the parts for other things. And that decreases the number of cellular receptors and increases the perception of pain. And that explains why people who take opioids consistently for a few weeks will go back to the practitioner looking for a stronger opioid or looking for higher doses. They're actually experiencing more pain instead of less pain with the same insult. And this type of compensation doesn't occur at every receptor, but it is oftentimes the reason for the rebound effects of some of our medications. And in those situations, it's very important not to take the medication for longer than recommended.